Calm down, calm down. Goodness me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. What we're doing um, at the moment is we're running a little series. And the little series is all about the subject of love your church. Sit down, Bob, for goodness sake. (sighs) Love your church. So we're on number three of our Love the Church. And this is based on, on a book that um, I was encouraged to have a look at, and it's, these are the chapter headings of the book. Um, our small groups are working through the book as well, and um, so I thought I'd just take the titles and, and unpack it myself. So we've got eight sermons in this series. We're on number three, and number three is on gathering. So, so far we've talked about belonging, welcoming, and this week we're talking about uh, gathering. And I'm going to base the whole of this um, talk on Psalm 122. How many Psalms are there? Does anybody know how many Psalms there are? About how many? 100 and 150-ish, yeah. 169? You've just made that up. <laughs> so the book of Psalms is, is, is the, uh, the book of, it's like the song book in the Bible, in the Old Testament. So you've got the Bible, it's divided into two parts, Old Testament, New Testament. And within the Old Testament, we have the book of Psalms and the Psalms. It's like the hymn book, the song book, the poetry um, of the Old Testament. There's 150 of them. 150 psalms Um, and some are really quite short um, maybe four or five verses Um, some of well one of them psalm 119 um, goes on for a long 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 time Um, I always remember being told to read the bible to be able to read the bible if you read three chapters of the bible a day and five on Sunday you get through the bible in a year so three but, uh, chapters a day and then five on Sunday and then you hit Psalm 119 and you, you think oh am I ever going to get through this Psalm 122 so Psalm so 150 number 122 in the book of Psalms in the Old Testament and let me read to you these words it says I rejoice with those who said to me let us go to the house of the Lord Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. So, This is a psalm of ascent, psalm of ascent. This is going up. The Old Testament writers, when they talk about encountering God, they talk about going up. We lift up our eyes, we look into the Lord, and the the psalm of ascent is one of a journey into the presence of God. When the Old Testament writers were um, helping people to have an encounter with God, they took them on a journey. And the Psalms of Ascent, there are 15 of them, 15 Psalms of Ascent. And the 15 Psalms of Ascent carry the same pattern. Let me give you, I wrote these down for you so that you can see. So... Psalm 120 to 122, 123 to 120. You can see how they divide up. So there's five sections, and each has got three psalms in it. And they all carry the same pattern. So like Psalm 120, there's trouble. When you read Psalm 120, you realize there's something amiss. But if you go to Psalm 120, 121 you find there that there is a call to trust to trust in the Lord and then when you go to Psalm 122 you see that there is triumph there is a result and each of these Psalms so you've got three Psalms it's like a triplet 
or uh, yeah, let's go with triplet. So you get a triplet of tr psalms, the psalms of ascent. Each of them carry the same pattern. There's trouble, there's trust, and then there is triumph, victory. And then there's five sets of these. Did you know that before? There you go. How about that? So we are landing today in Psalm 122. And Psalm 122 is Psalm number three out of the three at the beginning there. So we've had trouble, we've had trust. And Psalm 122 is a psalm of triumph. So we are triumphal in our uh, reading of this psalm. And the, the reason why is because it talks about God's people coming to the place of worship. So in our, our Love Your Church series, we're saying, do you know what? It's really important to know that you belong. And if you, if you breathe in, you belong. You're, you're, you're part of you can belong. It's really important to know that you are welcome. So many people come up with a list of reasons why I wouldn't be welcome in church. And they can say, well, I do this and I'm not like that and I'm not as good and I can't do this. And, and so therefore you try and discount yourself. The one thing that God says is, because I died on the cross for you, you have no excuse. There is nothing that you have done or could do that will separate you from my amazing love. So you belong. You are welcome. And then today we're just picking up on the fact that loving your church is about gathering together those who belong and who've responded to the welcome. I don't know what you think about when you think, oh, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go to church today. Some people are excited about going to church. I get excited about going to church um, because this is where I meet family. This is where you know, friends are. This is where relationships kick off and, and uh, we build one another up. Also, this is a place where we get to worship God and we can sing and we can praise God. This is a place where we can share with one another what our struggles are and know that you are not condemned, but you are loved and supported and cared for. And therefore, we gather together because we need each other. And the psalmist says here in Psalm 122, I'm going to fly over, there's only nine verses in this, we're going to fly over this and see whether we can get some, some fruit out of this. The psalmist says this, he says, I rejoice with those who said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. I just want to put it in, out there, you know, it's good to go to church. And... To invite somebody to go to church shouldn't be hard. Don't think about it as being a chore or a difficulty. Recognize that where you're inviting them to is a, is a really good place. And it says here that I rejoice with those who said to me. So the, the psalmist is saying, I rejoice with those who said to me. So what he's saying, he says, he said, so I'm rejoicing because these others invited me to be part of this gathering in the presence of God. And because they were excited about being with God, they then invited me to come and be part of what God is doing. And I'm, I'm excited to do that. There's nothing, there's nothing better, I think, than seeing a church growing. And to see a church growing is a sign, a very clear sign, that those who are part of what God is doing are excited about it to the point where they will invite others to come and be part of it. I don't know how you've come to come to church. I don't know what your journey is. Um, these days, people are quite independent, aren't they? We sort of zip around on on the internet and check out what's around and then but once upon a time it used to just it used to pretty much be that somebody invited did anybody invite you to come to church if you were when you first started to go to church was it because somebody invited you just uh, can I see some hands somebody said come on come to church okay nobody's putting their hands up and saying definitely Rob at the back so far we've got one hand 
And oh, there's some more hands. Oh, okay. Yeah. Somebody invited you. How did the others come to church? Goki, how, how did you start to come to church? So you were invited by your wife? Oh, well, there you go. Then you were invited. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes we've got a choice, haven't we? We've got to, even that, that wasn't a choice. You just you got to come. You're coming. That's that's good. How did you, James? How did you start coming to church? You had to go to church because that was what you did at school. But you had the option of stopping going. Then you could, but you didn't. That's good. Anybody else? How did anybody else get to come to church? Rog, how did you get to go to church? I was a conscript choir boy. You had a job to do. He's in the choir. Fantastic. The psalmist says this, though. Look, he says, I'm really excited. I'm really excited that somebody invited me to come into God's presence. That's what the psalmist is saying. He says, I'm really excited that somebody has said to me, this place will be better if you were there. When you see empty seats around, think of the people who could be filling those seats. And just to put it out there, we've got about another 60 seats stacked up in a room at the back. So if you're thinking to yourself, there's empty seats here, wouldn't it be great if such and such was here? Or, oh, I wonder if they'll have room for them. Don't worry about space. We've got, and the seats seem to be coming forward and more forward each week. We can get another 60, 60 chairs in here. But the psalmist says this, doesn't he? I rejoice with those who said to me, I'm excited because I got invited to church. And gathering is about coming not to a building or a facility. Although the psalmist says, let us go to the house of the Lord. One of the things you've got to remember when the psalmist was writing is that they didn't have the privilege that we have. We have the amazing privilege of being able to come into the presence of the Lord wherever we are. Whether I'm walking Bruce over the park, whether I'm in here with you, I can meet with God. Now, for those who were reading this psalm, or those uh, of this time, the place of God's presence was in the temple. So you had to go to the house of the Lord. Before the temple, there was something called the tabernacle. And Moses wandered around the desert with the children of Israel, God's people. And they, every time they stopped somewhere, they built this worship center called the tabernacle. And it's phenomenal. I'd love to do a little series on the tabernacle one day. But then there comes a point where David's heart, King David's heart, was to build a place where God would be honored and God would be worshipped. And it didn't happen in his time. But that mantle was passed over to his son Solomon. And Solomon built the temple. And the temple is in the center of Jerusalem. And if you go to Jerusalem today, you find the, the Wailing Wall. And the Wailing Wall is the foundations of that temple um, that uh, Solomon saw to be built. A place where people could encounter God. Now you can encounter him anywhere. And the number of times I've spoken to people and said, you know, oh, I just feel so much closer to God when I'm walking through the woods. Or I feel so much closer to God when I'm just sat in the car driving to work and that's where I pray and that's where I worship. But there's something exciting about what God does when his people gather together. He says this, let's go. Let's go. Come on, let's go to the house of the Lord. Here's a challenge for you. If there's somebody that you used to see here regularly that you don't see here anymore, would you give them a call and tell them that you miss them? Tell them that they may be waiting for somebody just to give them a call and say, hey, just missed you this morning. Now, this is how God speaks. If God's given you somebody right now, somebody's name or a face, of a vision, a picture of someone that used to be here, that's not here now, at this moment in time. COVID made a mess of people gathering. But the body of Christ can turn that around. Think of that person. And then today, 
give them a call. Say, we miss you. It'd be lovely to be back together again. When they come into the presence of God, the psalmist talks about the fact that our feet are standing in your gates. I love this. It's the fact that it's not just a case of rushing in and getting on with business and doing stuff. There's an opportunity just to stop for a moment. The leaders of this church, the deacons this morning, we spent some time together in prayer. And part of our time of prayer today, specifically for you all, was that you would have an awareness of the presence of God. And just like the psalmist is writing here, that there will be that moment. Oh, God is here. It's God is here. And his desire is to meet with you and me. And I love the way the psalmist just brings to a point and says, stop, stand. The Bible reminds us that we are to be still. Stop all the rushing. Be still for a moment. And know that God is God. So come on, he's saying, let's get together. Come on, he's saying, let's remember the awe and the wonder because we are in the presence of God. And what I love is that how the psalmist goes on and says, talks about Jerusalem. It's a, it's a city that is, uh, if you've ever been to Jerusalem, but I, I remember it, it can't grow anymore. The city of Jerusalem has walls around the outside. So the only thing that can happen is restriction within the walls. You can't build out anymore the old city of Jerusalem. And what it talks about, as the psalmist speaks here, he talks about the fact that let's gather together. Let's get close to one another. It talks here about it's a, it's a city on a hill. You're in a place where you're being observed. People can see what's going on when you're gathering. But it's closely compacted together. You see, the enemy loves to uh, take people out. He loves to disable. He loves to distract. He loves to mess us around. And I love the way the psalmist says here that this place, as we gather together, is a place of love and support. So draw near to one another. We are the family of God. We are set apart to, uh, to love one another, encourage one another, to bless one another. It's where the tribes go up, it says here. The tribes of the laws, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. The statute given to Israel is the law. And within the law, there is a directive to come and bring your praise and worship to your creator. There's freedom and liberty for us. We don't have to do. But once we've had an encounter with God it's not a case of having to it's a case of wanting to I want to bring my praise to God the psalmist talks about in Psalm 122 verse 5 they stand the thrones for judgment the thrones of the house of David and in this, this imagery here, what it talks about here is the foundation of everything that we are about. And it talks about judgment. It's putting ourselves under God and saying, Lord, would you speak into our life? Would you bring us our wisdom? Which is why, why are we reading Psalm 122 in Basingstoke Baptist Church on the 16th of October 2022? It's because we believe the word of God is what we need. We need to press in to God's word, the Bible. We need to spend time in the word of God to receive his wisdom so that we know that we won't be judged. How do you make sure you're not going to be judged? Well, you make sure that you don't break the laws. 
And there's freedom that is given to us as we walk in our relationship with Christ. But there are some things that we should do and there's some things that we shouldn't do. So we stand before the word of God. And we gain wisdom to be able to walk out day by day in what it means to be a child of the king. I don't know what your theology is with regard to Israel or Jerusalem. There are all types of uh, understanders of how important Israel is in the world today. It's a place of constant conflict and upset. But the word of God says quite clearly that we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I don't know if you've ever prayed for Jerusalem, but the word of God says quite clearly this is what we are called to do. And therefore, Lord, even here this morning, as we gather in your presence here on Gershwin Road, we want to pray peace over the nation of Israel. We pray, Father, that your people in that nation would know a unity and love, would have an encounter with you in Jesus' name. Amen. And praying certainly for God's people to come into a revelation of Jesus the Messiah. Pray for those who live in Jerusalem. The Hebrew writer in the book of Hebrews reminds us this, that we're not to give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another. And that's what we do as we gather, is we encourage one another. To say today that you are welcome, that you belong, and you have this call over your life to be part of a body together where you can encounter the presence of God, where you can bring your praise and your worship, where you can sit at the foot of the teaching from God's word, the scriptures, that you would live a life that is holy and honoring to him. It's a place where things are turned around. I'm looking at, uh, trying to find verses five, next one. <gasps> Jerusalem, build a city. There, they stand the thrones for judgment. We've done the judgment thrones. Pray for the priests of Jerusalem. May those, it says here, who love you be secure. And this is what we find when we come to the word of God and we spend time in his presence and we gather together is we actually find our security because we are able to love on one another, support one another, care for one another, look out for one another, share the gifts that we have with one another. Verse 8 talks about the fact that for the sake of my brothers and sisters, I will say peace be within you. It's a family thing. I love the way it just says brothers and sisters. This is about family. So when we talk about gathering together, we're talking about living out what it means to be the family of God. And you are welcome to be part of it. And how about this as a prayer to draw things to a close? For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Let's pray together as those who come together that, that we might all know God's blessing, that he might meet all of our needs as we certainly go into an autumn where there are so many areas of concern with regard to resources. Let's go in praying for one another, knowing that our God will meet our needs. And when we talk about prosperity over the body of Christ, this whole church, let's start praying for the boldness to invite people to come that we might see the growth that God desires that we would have as a church in this community. We're told to be a city on a hill. 
We're told to be a people who are light in the darkness. And the more of you lights that we get together, the greater the intensity. And one of the things that we recognize about light is that it draws people. And we recognize that our God is drawing people to himself. And wouldn't it just be awesome? Is in drawing people to himself, he says, do you know what? There's a brilliant place where they can grow, where they can feel at home, where they can be part of an amazing family. And it is that little gathering on Gershwin Road. And each one of us has a responsibility to make that a reality. So the psalmist, a psalm of a sense, going up into God's presence, recognizing that we are invited to encounter God. But the call is that we would not do it on our own, but we would do it together as a family. So when we talk about loving your church, we're talking about gathering together. Can you just turn to somebody and say, I've just realized how much I need you. Just tell them that. You are so valuable, so welcome. And the beauty is that God says, come together. Be part of my family. And as we are a family together, we are then able to bring God the worship that he so rightly deserves. Let me pray as the team cover to lead us in our closing song of worship. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your call upon our lives. That you invite us into a relationship with you. But we also recognize that your call is to community, to gathering together. And we pray, Father, that here in this place, this would be a a catalyst for everything that you want to happen with your people. That here in this place, people will be saved, come to know you as Lord and Savior. That in this place, people might find their healing. That in this place, they might find their deliverance, being set free from all of the enemy's plans. That in this place, Lord, people would find encouragement and love, acceptance and affirmation. And in this place, even as the psalmist here writes, we might be a people who are aware of your prosperity as you pour out your blessing upon us, that you would bless us to be a blessing to others. In Jesus.